welcome to uh, the Now podcast. This is our fifth episode, and we're incredibly excited to welcome our guest today. His name is Noah Asher, and he is a uh, author and business owner and communicator. Recently published a book by the name of Chaos, uh, Overcoming Chaos, or Overcoming the Overwhelming, excuse me. So Noah, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me, ladies. I appreciate it. We're excited to have you here. I'm very intrigued by your book, and we're looking forward to getting to know you a little bit more. Why don't you tell us about yourself? Yes. Yeah, so, of course, my name is Noah Asher. And then I, like you said in the intro, I am a business owner. I have a consulting firm where we help smaller businesses uh, buy consulting, <laughs> but also we do these undercover assessments, which are really cool, where it's kind of like secret shopping. We go in, we uh, see what could be done better for the business, and then we meet with the business owners afterwards, a few days later, once the assessment is completed. And we um, a lot of times go in and train the staff afterward as well. So that's a, the fun part of what I do. Uh, we do a lot of restaurants, which means I get to do a lot of eating. So uh, that's my true love language. So <laughs> that helps um, with what I do. But we also, one thing that I love where I come from is I actually started in the hotel industry. Mm. And uh, I was I w went into a very popular hotel chain and applied for a front desk and I got it. And then three weeks later, they made me the general manager, mm. which was insane. I knew nothing about hotels. I didn't even know the brand standard at that point for the the property and a lot of trial and error. But I took that over and then moved from general manager to director of operations. Wow. And then that's when I left going, you know, I could do a lot of this on my own. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Wow. I bet there's some crazy stories <laughs> that you would have. <laughs> oh, so, so many. Uh, the hotel industry is crazy. I've seen, seen it all um, from staff and customers <laughs> alike. So yeah, very crazy. But, um, you know, when you have to have the, the police officer's phone number on speed dial, uh, that's never fun, never but it's a 20, it's literally a 24 seven business. And so you have to have your phone available. And about a year and a half ago, I got diagnosed with lupus oh. and um, it got so overwhelming for me. Uh, ironically, that's the name of my book, but it got so overwhelming that that's when I realized, you know, I need to start my own business and kind of do my own hours because the the hotel industry was literally killing me. Um, about a year and a half ago, I was in a wheelchair. I couldn't even walk. Um, and now I, I run two miles every day. So Oh, wow. I feel like yeah. uh, that's something that you could kind of relate to a little bit, Michelle, with your story. Oh, yeah, well, that's true. Mm -hmm. So one day we'll, t we'll talk more about that. But um, yeah, I have multiple sclerosis. So we have oh, wow. commonalities there. Yeah. Uh, it's, not, it's not fun dealing with chronic illnesses. So is that what led right. you uh, on the path of becoming an author? No. So this book started to be birthed, I would say, 11 years ago um, when chaos really um, took over my life. Uh, 11 years ago, I had gotten incarcerated, actually, and it was a journey of just I lost everything. And I'll never forget laying um, in my, my cell bed crying out to God like, God, if you love me, you'll take my life. You won't want me to be in pain anymore. And he didn't take my life. And so I took it in my own hands. I literally, uh, this may get a little graphic. So if you're listening to this and you struggle with depression, I don't want to um, trigger you in any sort of way. But I, I took a sheet and went to the shower and, and tried to take my own life and it didn't work. And so I was mad with God for not taking my life. And then I was mad at myself that I couldn't do it properly either. And um, finally, it, it was just like a wake up moment for me. I realized, you know what, I'm going to stop saying God, why me? And start saying, God, use me. Mm -hmm. And when I started, when I changed my mind and my heart from why me to use me, that's when I really started realizing, you know what, there, there may be purpose in my life after all. And so I've taken my pain, I've taken my past, and I've, I've tried to present a purpose that is greater than myself. And, and one thing that changed my life was when 
I studied the the life of Joseph in the Bible. He went from a pit to prison to palace. And when he was in his palace moment, he he met up, you know, face to face with his brothers who started his chaos 13 years prior. And he said, what the enemy intended for evil, God used for good. And a lot of times that's that's what you see on the uh the Hobby Lobby wall art, <laughs> what the enemy intended for evil, God used for good. But the verse actually says what the enemy intended for evil, God used for good to save many. And those three words of to save many is really what changed my perspective as well, because I realized, yes, God can take my pain and he can turn things around, but he's not just turning it around for myself. He's turning it around for a greater purpose to help save many, not that I can save anyone, but that he can use my story to help save others. And that's when I really started to just really orchestrate this book. A lot of it was written written um, while I was incarcerated. I was writing letters to my mom and my dad just going, we're going to get through this. You know, when I had that heart change and I was like, we're going to get through this. And it was therapy. It was my own free therapy where I was writing to myself. And then I was able to take it and turn it around and go, I want to provide hope. I want to provide help. And I want to provide humor to to people who are in there own personal chaos that's powerful so you started you said 10 years ago working on this book Uh, 11 years years and then i sat on it going i can't post it until i feel like i've rebuilt completely and then i realized we're always rebuilding if i i bought a house not too long ago and you know there's always things you can do to it i can um, renovate my bedroom right now. And I promise you right after we finish now, it's like, okay, let's do the kitchen. <laughs> There's always things we can upgrade. We can re- redo. Mm-hmm. And I realized, yeah, if I wait on this, um, until I'm fully rebuilt, then it'll never happen. And I really felt like God was saying, okay, I gave you a word and it's a word that I gave you for yourself, but also to help others. And if you don't want to be used I'm going to use someone else. And so I remember uh, I go, I attend online with uh, Elevation Church and every week I'll hear like my pastor, he'll say something. And then if he says the word chaos at all, I'm like, I'm like listening closely going, oh, oh no, (laughs) you know, my whole book is just going to be taken in one message. And um, that's when I realized, yeah, yeah, I need to go ahead and do this before God just moves on to the next person. So. Well, I think many of our listeners are realtors like us, right? We've been in the real estate industry uh, myself for 20 years, and there's definitely been a lot of chaos. Our market's been pretty volatile the last few years, and it had most, I think I could speak for just about everyone on saying it's been a bit overwhelming. I mean, what gold nuggets from your, your book or your background can you share with those that are maybe struggling right now to not only provide for their family families, but provide the value for their, their clients? That's a good question. The word chaos is very interchangeable. Yes, it can mean um, incarceration or addiction or rejection or loneliness, illness, mm-hmm. but it also can mean bankruptcy. It can mean, you know, job loss. And I would say that uh, the one thing that I'm seeing with the book is that overwhelming doesn't have to be some big moment. For people, it doesn't have to be like you're shaking hands with the president and you've overcome in some amazing way, but overcoming daily is something that that needs to happen. And for me, I think that some days when you're too paralyzed from pain or too paralyzed from sadness to even get up out of bed, you can overcome by just getting up and getting dressed today, you know? Just just the the small wins. Start yes, there is what I hear you saying, you know, start. Yes, with, I, with you know, I would say this, that, yeah, if you look at like this, a, a staircase and you look at the top, sometimes it's very overwhelming, <laughs> right? But if you look at one step at a time, before you know it, you take this step and you take the next step before you know it, you're at the top and you're looking back and you're going, wow, I've, I've conquered the staircase. And I think no matter what the market looks like, you know, I, I think that, if you look at the market as a whole, if you look at the numbers every day, percentages of um, 
you know, interest rates going up, it can be very overwhelming, I'm sure. But if you just look at one little moment and and just try to make the little wins, eventually it looks like one big win overall. What would you say, um, what's, is your, your main win? Yeah. Uh, I would say it depends on the day that you ask me, you know, uh, last week I got a letter from a U.S. Senator just telling me and my team, congrats on the book. Congrats on all that you're doing in the community. And that alone was like, wow, that's, that's a huge ordeal. Um, and then, uh, yesterday I got a phone call from the department of corrections for the whole state asking me to, uh, do some interviews and, and things that I'm like, well, that's a big win. But then other days when I'm doing something with my business, I'm like, that's a big win because a lot of people in my situation can't get to that point. And so I think it depends on the day, but I, I take every day. The best thing to do is just take every day as a, as a truly a gift. And I know that sounds cliche, but it's so true. I didn't think I would ever be sitting where I'm sitting right now. But one thing that that for the person listening to this going, I am overwhelmed, I would say that stop trying to uh, go, okay, I, I'm not winning because I'm not where I think I should be. Mm -hmm. I never thought I'd be sitting here writing a book. I never thought I'd be sitting here uh, doing podcast. Um, but this is this is where I'm at. This is what I'm I'm supposed to be doing. It was in my pain that I found my purpose. And in my purpose is where I found my platform. And I think for people listening to this, I mean, even what y'all are doing, um, you know what your purpose is. And now y'all have created a platform to do this with a podcast. And that's amazing. And people are able to benefit from that. But I also know that you you guys have a, a Christian background and I love seeing that, you know, your posts and things like that. And that alone is a platform to let people know um, that there's hope outside of ourselves. So. I love that. I love that. I can relate. <laughs> I'm sure many can. Um, I'm a, I guess I would say I'm a hyper achiever <laughs> type of personality. <laughs> yeah. So I'm always trying to strive to, to what's that next thing. And I'm, I'm reading a book called The Gap and the Gain right now. And it's, you know, mind the gap and just focus on where all those wins, like you talked about, all the wins that you've had in the past and look how far you've come rather than how you compare to others. And I, I feel like that somewhat relates to what you're saying. And I think it's just so applicable to so many people's lives. Yeah, I would say that it's being content where I'm at, but not complacent. And that that's a big thing that comes up. And um, when I speak at addiction centers and rehab centers and places like that is telling people you need to be okay when you um, move into that first for the first time out, out of your your chaos when you're rebuilding your life and, and you have a one bedroom, one bathroom apartment. That's a win. Take the win. Be content with that. But don't be complacent. Still work toward a bigger goal, but also be able to celebrate. You know, I'm, I'm glad for this. I mentioned Hobby Lobby early. Go to Hobby Lobby and buy buy you a little wall art and, and and make it your home. You speaking of um your local um in jails and so forth um in your state, I noticed that you mentioned that all proceeds of your of your book um will be going to prison libraries and rehab centers. That's very, very, very remarkable. Can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I am so blessed that I that I have my business and that's where I make my money. And this book was never to be a money maker. Um, I'm happy that it's doing so well in the US and in the UK currently. Um, but from day one, I always said that this book would not just be for um for me to buy a new vehicle, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. It, it was completely for the people. I say that I want to bring the brightest of lights to people in their darkest of pits. Mm -hmm. And um, that's something that I really wanted to do with this book. And and I wrote this book with hope, help, and humor. And um, one thing that we're seeing with reviews is people are going, we laughed and we cried in the same chapter. And I think that's so cool um, because the, the laughter for me came about with 
I feel like if you can joke about your situation, you take ownership over it instead of it owning you. And so when you can just laugh and and have a good time, it, it is really like a smack in the face to the enemy. And so uh, this book is not a typical self-help book. It's really not a self-help book at all. It's more of like Christian nonfiction, but it's it's a little different when it provides like the humor aspect as well. I love it. So where can people find your book? They can get it on uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, uh, christianbook.com, anywhere. But if they go to my website, which is thenoahasher.com, they can find all the links there. Perfect. So the nugget for me during our time together uh, today was through your pain, you found purpose, and through your purpose, you found your platform. And I think that's fantastic. Agreed. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you for all y'all are doing. And I think it's so remarkable. I mean, I understand that the market has been crazy. I bought a house in this market, so I was I was a crazy person for doing that. But um is what some may say, but I needed a home. I wanted a home and uh, it didn't matter for me. I knew that God would provide however that took place. And um, when you know it's your home, you, you still purchase it. So, okay, there's yeah. one more Thanks thing for all y'all did do. not discuss. Um, uh, congratulations on being a homeowner, by the way. But yes, another huge win. That's fantastic. Yes. But we did not talk about the fact that you have an L.A. Dodgers hat on. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the how, Dodgers. How's that come to be when you're in Georgia? Yeah, I have. I know I'm from Georgia. Um, uh, Braves fans don't like this hat, and um, but I have a family that lives in LA, and um, I do a lot of traveling, and LA is one of my my hubs, and so love that area. Um, Dodgers are just they're they're just my my baseball team. But what's so funny is my football team. Like I'm all about college football. Uh, it's it's the Georgia Bulldogs all day long, of and course. um, yes, like we go crazy here for some Georgia football. I really want to see a college football game in the South. Like I would say, it's oh. on a bucket list. <laughs> wow, that's so funny. I have a picture. It's actually on my website. Actually, it's in the book. It's so funny. But when we won our national championship, I'm. Uh, it was snowing um, after the game. Um, and we'd had like the parade through the college town and, um, I have a picture of me on the field, like looks like I'm walking out of the, where the, the bulldogs run out of and there's snow on the ground. It's like the, the most beautiful picture. And since y'all are from California, let me tell you what snow is. I guess I should start there. Let me, let me explain what snow is. No, just kidding. But, well, um, it, it's definitely something you have to do. We're in the mountains. Okay. Outside. Well. Outside Yosemite, so a little bit cooler than the LA oh, area. But yeah, some snow. for sure. We have a snowstorm coming in this weekend. We've had to rearrange our travel plans because of the storm coming in this weekend. Mm-hmm. So we know all about the Wow. <laughs> yeah, I love I love skiing. I need to come out there and ski. ski. Do y'all ski? I used to snowboard Same. when I was a little bit okay. younger and uh, haven't done as much of it. <laughs> lately a good well you lives in tahoe and she's she goes all the time so. oh i love tahoe i love skiing there and i did say y'all by the way so you know i'm from the south that's just to let y'all know that's okay. I, i'm a secret yeah. southerner one day i'll probably <laughs> live there we even took our kids for a road trip starting in nashville went through both carolinas and ended in georgia and we are all super wow fun. yeah yeah it's, it's awesome area good good barbecue you start hanging Good out sweet with tea. people in the yeah. south. You start talking like it. y'all, y'all, <laughs> y'all. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. Um, when I go out west, have you have you been to Zaxby's or heard of Zaxby's? No. It's like a chicken place. When people come here, that's the first place they want to go, and the first place I want to go when I'm out there, of course, is In and Out Burger. And so, it's kind of funny. But when I go out there, I try to start talking like I'm not from the south. And all of my friends start talking like they're from the South when they come here. So well, the it next quickly time you changes. Come to California, you'll have to head up to our 
neck of the woods, just outside Yosemite National Park. We'd love to have you. Courtney owns a, yeah. a boutique hotel here. Yeah. So you got some connections. Wow. Okay. I'll come inspect it. Show you, show There you go. brand standards. <laughs> Yeah. I'd love it. <laughs> well, we are Yeah. so grateful that you joined us today and um, thank you for what you're doing. Uh, my husband's in law enforcement and uh, works in a correction facility. So he, um, he deals with that kind of chaos on the daily. So I will share the book with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We really appreciate you coming on. So where can people follow you? I know we follow you on Instagram. Why don't you tell them your Yeah. handle? Um, yeah, you can follow me on Instagram. It's the Noah Asher, or uh, you can just get on my website, the Noah .com, And that's where you can see some videos, some interviews, some articles I've been in, um, some other interviews, but also uh, some sit down like with some of my team where we talk about the book. Thank you, Noah. We hope that you have a very blessed day. I guess your day is wrapping up since you're ahead of us. So we'll, Yeah, uh, we'll it's definitely, almost dinner time. all right, lunch for us. So <laughs> we'll hit you up when we're in Georgia. yes, please do. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Noah. you. Bye. Best wishes to you. Yes. Bye.